All right, May 2nd, doesn't matter, 2020 doesn't matter what day it is, tomorrow's my birthday, you don't give a shit. All right, so, <laughs> so I did a, did a podcast with KJ yesterday, maybe we'll do it consistently, maybe we won't, I don't know, we'll see. Um, it is interesting, it's really interesting um, interacting with KJ every couple of months. Every time I see him, I can tell based off of him, like, like based off of my interaction with him, I can feel myself getting better at comedy. I think that I don't even know where, where should I even start with this. Um, also, also, you know what? I'll start here. KJ, when you listen to this, because I'm going to put your name in the title, don't get a big fucking head, you you old man, you old fucking douchebag, you nappy haired piece of shit, you Detroit scum, you. I'm from the suburbs where we drive minivans. We play softball, bitch. <laughs> oh, fuck. Uh, no, man. Like, all right. So, I, yeah, that's okay. Let's get that out of the way. When KJ, whenever you listen to this, don't get a big fucking head. Don't act like you're, like you're better than everybody, like you think you're fucking somebody. You're not. You're nobody. You're nobody. You moved to Corona. You're not even Los Angeles. You're not even San Francisco or San Diego. You're in fucking Corona, KJ. Fuck you. Anyway, so I, I'm of the belief system that stand-up comedy is similar to things like jujitsu or rap music or other comparisons to other things. Um, stand-up is, is a skill, it's a craft that requires, in my opinion, apprenticeship. I think it's really good to have somebody be better than you and to have been doing it longer than you to teach you things. Um, I started doing stand-up, not stand-up comedy, I started doing improv when I was like 14. And I remember, so I was doing it from 14 to like 20-something. I was doing it for almost a decade. And I got to college. I started my own comedy improv group. Um, I was doing National Comedy Theater in San Diego. Like improv, I was very good at it. And I knew how to teach it. I, I understood it in a lot of very technical ways. And I remember trying to teach people who were around my age in college or even older. I was trying to teach them this, this skill, essentially, that has technique to it. And I would get every, every single semester, we would get a new crop of people and there would always be like one or two people that would give me fucking attitude or would sass me on the shit and, and who would question what I was trying to teach them and not question like, oh, hey man, I don't understand. Like, what do you, can you elaborate? I mean, question like, like, hey, I know I, I, this is literally my first class in doing this, but you know, I think that's probably wrong. It's like, go fuck yourself, man. I've been doing this for damn near a decade. Like, I know what the fuck I'm talking about. So I have the same belief system when it comes to comedy. If someone's been doing it longer than me, and is objectively better than me at it, I'm going to listen to him. That's just how it's going to be. Like, that's the smart way to go about it. Humble yourself, you egomaniac comedians that are potentially listening to this. Comics have the biggest fucking heads. We all think we're fucking hilarious. We all think we're somebody, and we're not. We're nobodies. Nobody gives a fuck about us. So listen to people that are better than you. Um, and I remember f- meeting. I remember meeting KJ... Uh, at the Getaway Cafe. I think Damani introduced me to him. And I remember early on, we would be doing, we'd be hanging out after open mics or shows or whatever in the parking lot. And this motherfucker was just holding court, just, just rapid fire jokes, just being able to roast anybody whenever the fuck he feel, felt like it. And you could tell, like watching him, I was like, oh shit, he's He's been doing this a while. Even before I knew he had been doing it longer, I could just feel like this comfort, there was a flow about it. And it reminded me of improv. It reminded me of when, you know, when I was, um, when I was a good amount of years in and I knew what I was doing and I was doing it in front of people that were like a year in and I could feel them not understanding how I was doing what I was doing. And so I felt that watching him and immediately I was like, okay, right now that's going to be the standard for me. 
Like, if you listen to this this podcast um, often, you'll know that I bring this this dude up a lot because I've essentially created a realistic standard to meet. Like, if you hear me talk about Dave Chappelle and, and Bill Burr and all those guys a lot, but at this point and where I'm at, especially with this quarantine going on, that's just not realistic to try to achieve. It is really not realistic to think, Aaliyah, hey, see, if it wasn't for me, this dog would be dead a long time ago. Cars were driving by. She was totally happy just jumping in front of a car like a fucking idiot. Anyway, um, well, there was a chopper going by. Okay, so <clears throat> don't even remember what I was going to say. I'm trying to figure it out. All right. Uh, yeah, so I created a standard. Like, I know that it is feasible for me to get to the level that KJ's at. And it's just a matter of work and time and effort. And over time, it's, it's been fascinating. Like, every time I see him, every, and it's usually like a couple months, maybe a month to, I don't know, man, time doesn't make any sense to me anymore at all especially with quarantine time like I'd have to look back on on old episodes of the ACMM to really gauge how often I see him but I'm gonna just spitball and say every couple of months I'll see KJ and actually have a conversation with him and every single time I have a conversation with him I can feel that I've gotten better at it like I remember my first real like in-depth conversation about comedy with him we were outside Father's Pub in Anaheim. It was an open mic. And we were in the parking lot because that's where comedians hang out. In case you guys didn't know, comedians that are poor, with nowhere to go, that aren't regulars at the comedy store, that don't make any money, we just hang out in parking lots a lot. And uh, so we're in this parking lot. And he's basically, I was asking him questions. I was trying to figure out, like, how is he... How is it then, when we're in uh, groups of people, how is it that he's able to keep going? He's just besting every. He's just taking everybody out. Like, oh, fuck, hold on, I'm going down a hill. I don't want to be breathing hard. Okay, so we're, we're standing in the parking lot, and he's, he's breaking it down. He's like, all right, so imagine you have this idea or concept or whatever, and it's like you're planting a seed. The idea is a seed, you've planted it in the ground, and then that seed turns into the tree trunk. And the tree trunk is the premise, and then from the tree trunk you get the branches, and you just kind of naturally branch out. And I understood that in theory. Like, I understood the concept of that and, and um, the idea of what he was trying to present to me. But I just didn't have the, I didn't have the self-confidence and I didn't have the stage time um, under my belt to apply it naturally. And so, you know, over time I studied it. Uh, you, if you listen to this fucking podcast, I'm sure you'll know. And then I got better. I understood, I understood it mechanically much better. But then all these other issues, and I just, I just wasn't able to apply it in the same way. And then over time, every time I saw him, I just got a little better. Every time I, I interacted with him, I was like, oh, okay. I can, I can see, I'm, it, it forms a little better. I'm try, I, know, I know I'm repeating myself a lot, but I'm trying to put it into words, and it's just kind of difficult to describe it. But it's like... I don't, okay, okay. If you're a person that has learned any type of skill or technique, any, what, you know, you're trying to be a doctor, or you're trying to surf, you want to mow lawns really good. I, I don't know, man. Whatever the fuck your thing is, whatever you want to get good at, I'm sure you've felt that where you start learning a thing and then over time you get better and you just, you can just feel that you've gotten better at it. And so I remember, um, before, like, I remember creating this standard in my head, like, okay, I want to get to wherever KJ's at when it comes to just hanging out and talking shit. That's where I want to get to. And I felt like in the beginning of the buddy system specifically, uh, I was at the lowest rung of that. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't play the game with comics when we would all get together and we'd be in a circle or whatever. 
And then over time, I was like, oh, okay, I'm moving. Up. Not only am I moving up the ladder, but other comments are falling off. People are giving up. People are, you know, moving away. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm, uh, maybe there's people that have gotten better and who have not fallen off. They've just moved to a different place. But generally speaking, people fall off, people give up. And I could just feel myself like getting that much better. And then when a new person comes in, it wasn't like I was astronomically better, but I could feel like, okay, you, you know how to play the game, but I've been playing the game longer and I've been working on the techniques with the game. And then it got to a point where I remember um, being like, all right, well now my standard is Will and George. Uh, I was like, all right, I'm going to get to Will, George, and like Damani. I'm going to get to kind of where they're at with it. And now I feel like I've, I've gotten to that point. Um, and then, fuck, this is how my brain works. It goes all over the goddamn place. I'm um, trying to stay focused, trying to stay in the pocket, I'm trying to stay in first person. All right, I'm back in first person. Um, whew, so... So, so yeah, so I, I, I finally, like, when you listen to Night Guy and Baldy, if you, if you were to listen to the first episode uh, that I did with Will versus now, there's, there's a complete shift in how I interact with him or how I interact with George or Damani or whatever, and I feel like, okay, we're on the same playing field now. We're, I figured out, like, I figured out the game, figured out how to play the game. Obviously, I can get better at it with them, but for the most part, I think we're about the same level when it comes to that. And then I, um, I was hanging out with KJ doing this podcast, and it was like it was like I understood the game, I understood what he's doing, and I can do it, but it's slower and it's clunkier. If you listen to the podcast, whenever he decides to post it, I think he's going to put it on YouTube. Um, I'm sure you can hear it. In the very beginning of the podcast, it's awkward. It's like not it's not awkward because he's not making it awkward like he's he's able to keep the energy up but I have to like get it running you know when you have um, you know when you have a, a an old school lawnmower and you're trying to get that shit to start and it oh, oh, oh. sorry a lady was backing out of her driveway and almost ran over my dog okay without me this dog would be dead years ago I just want people to appreciate me. I made a TikTok for her. I have a TikTok now because I'm that person. I'm that fucking old man. I'm damn near 30. I'm going to be 29 tomorrow and I own a TikTok. Yeah. I'm proud of it. Anyway. So, um, so we're hanging out or whatever and I can feel like I got to Oh, that's what I was saying. Um, so the lawnmower. Yeah, when you need to get a lawnmower started and you got to really like pull on that rip cord. I feel like the beginning of the, the podcast, I, it was me like, all right, let me, let me start this up. Let me get in first person. Let me get focused. Uh, he doesn't need to do that. Like he snaps into it really quick. He can decide. It's, it's like turning on, okay, more, more metaphors, more comparisons. Similes? This is a simile because I'm using like and or as. Who went to college, bitch? Who got a bachelor's degree? All right. It's, it's like I'm starting up a lawnmower when I'm deciding to get in that, that mode, and he's flipping a light switch. He just decides. I remember we were driving back from an open mic, me, him, and Jonathan. We were driving back from an open mic, and somewhere in L.A. or Anaheim or whatever, and we're all talking, and I always learned the not from the open mic. I learned the most from the drives back from the open mic and discussing it. I remember he was giving Jonathan advice of some kind, and then I, I jumped in in some way, I was trying to give advice, and then he just, like, it was, I, it is really hard to describe, it, 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 like, he just flipped the light switch, he immediately turned on into comedy mode, it was still him, it was still his voice, like, it, it, I, I, it is, it, it, you know, I don't, I don't think I have the words for it yet. And I'll have the words for it eventually. So I'll get back to you on that. But he basically flipped his switch and changed. Like he changed immediately and went into comedy mode and was immediately starting to roast me. And I was like, ah, well, shit. I don't have any, I don't have any armor. I don't have a sword. I don't even have like a pocket knife. I cannot defend myself in this situation. So I'm going to just shut the fuck up and listen. That was something I learned from, if you don't know, the, whoever was listening, if you don't know this, I used to work at a, at a gentleman's club 
a strip club, as the layman would put it. And I had uh, the owner, Dino. He, <laughs> yes, that was his fucking name. This dude was old school Italian mobster motherfucker. Like this guy, I'm sure this guy's murdered people with a piano wire wears all black suits he drinks cappuccino he drank ca those little tiny cappuccino cups and it still looks scary like he was that type of dude and <clears throat> i remember i remember sitting in in him doing one of the, one of our runs and I'll, I'll explain what a run is if you want email the buddy system at gmail.com if you're curious about that you won't do it anyway so he he was saying he was we were sitting there we were in the car and he was saying like you know aaron sometimes it's just better to shut the fuck up and I really took that to heart. <laughs> I had to take it to heart because one, it was fucking terrifying. And two, it was good advice. Sometimes you should just shut the fuck up. If someone knows something or is better than you at something, just shut the fuck up and listen. So that's what I did. I just listened. I just listened to him. And I kept taking in his information, all of it. And I, I, I continued to get better. But in that interaction with him on the podcast, eventually I was able to slide into a little better. Um, I was able to like click into first person. I had the joke come in. I was, I was in the conversation, but it wasn't immediate. It took warming up. It took time to like get better at it. And so I'm still... I'm getting there. I can feel every time I, KJ, when you listen to this, bitch, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. You're Keith Robinson. I'm Kevin Hart, motherfucker. I read his book. Bitch, I'm coming for you. Just so you know, keep teaching me shit. You better keep getting better because I'm coming for you, motherfucker. Anyway, <laughs> this is needless aggression. Uh, he hadn't done anything wrong. But anyway, so, so, um, yeah, it was just clunky. Like I can, I can feel myself getting better, but it's clunky. It needs polishing. Like it was like, I know what he's doing now and I know how to do it, but he's faster and he's more efficient. He's smoother and he has longevity with it. He can, he, he can go the distance with it. He can go for it longer. For me, it's like, it's like, it takes time to start it up. And then once I'm started up, I'm not doing it as fast. It's not as smooth. It's not as efficient. It's not as quick. And I lose energy doing it. Like, I have to use mental energy to be in the right headspace to make it work. And he doesn't seem to have to do that in the same way. So that's something else I got to work on. But in short, I can feel myself getting better. Every time I do it, I can feel myself getting better. And what's nice about that is it, does, it makes me mind less when I'm failing, which I do a lot bombing, make awkwardness, p poor decision making, making making really dumb statements, like do that shit all the time. If you listen to this, I'm sure you hear it all the time, but I know I'm getting better. And I think that the difference between me and someone who is unwilling to accept failure or who's unwilling to embarrass themselves is that they're not going to get as good at me. It, <laughs> Welp, that's the end of the podcast. No, they're not going to be, they're not, event at the, in the long run, they're not going to be as good as me. I can feel it. Like, the, I think the type of person who's willing to take those big swings and those big misses is also the type of person who takes a big swing and hits home runs. And I would rather take big swings and, and, and miss and embarrass myself and people talk shit so that when I hit those big home runs, everyone around me shuts the fuck up and recognizes what I'm doing. I'm not there yet, and I'm going to get there. Hold on a second. All right, when I recorded that, at some point, the recording stopped, and I think I just yammered into my, my phone like a crazy person. Uh, and then I realized it today. And it's been, I think it's been like two days. I don't know. It's May 3rd. It's my birthday. Happy birthday to me. Um, so, yeah, this is how this is going to end. I'm just going to edit this, and this is how it's going to end. I don't remember what I was saying.